Sure. Hello, everybody. Good evening. My name is Sarah Meyer, and today I'm hanging out with four modern moms who share their thoughts and tips on motherhood. Now, being a parent today comes with a load of demands. Your work schedule, children to grow up way too fast, and a world that is changing every single second. Now, on the other hand, there are also hacks, technologies, and conveniences that make being a mom or dad today yeah. than ever. Now, sometimes yeah. as parents, nice to step back and see how far we've come and look forward to what else we can do to make everything better. Today on the show, our guest, Janice Villanueva, a mother of three, an entrepreneur, events communication professional, and founder of Mommy Mundo and Mommy Matters. Hi, Janice. How are you? Hello, Sarah. All right. We've also got Isabel Romero, a mother of two and a visual artist. Isabel is joining us from home right now. Hi, hi, Isabel. And Cherry Mendoza, a mother of one and a lawyer. Cherry. There hi. she is. Hi, Cherry. Good evening to all of you. Thank you so much for making the time to join us here this evening. I'm going to get uh, right into the questions. I'll just shoot a question out there and maybe all three of you could answer. All right. Um, let's start with talking a little bit about motherhood and the, you know, the, the cross section between that and your career. Um, how do you juggle parenthood with, with a career or other commitments that you may have? Let's start with you, uh, Janice. Um, well, I'm a mompreneur, so basically I do have control over my time when workload permits. So sometimes I have very, very busy days. Um, so really, it's just really time management that keeps me going. Mm -hmm. So I use tools like a planner and my phone and all that. but in the end, I realized that um, what makes me able to do everything that I want to do is really just having good support, a support group behind me. So that mm -hmm. would include my husband, my home, my household, my team in the office, and all that. Very cool. About, uh, what about you, Isabel? Um, like Miss Vanis, my, my career is very flexible because um, I freelance as a graphic designer and I also do video editing and sometimes I also take commission paintings but um, so there um, I handle my own time so I can I can time manage and have enough time for my kids while while doing what I have to do and um, I also have a good support system. My mom helps out with taking care of my kids and my husband. And there, and also I also use apps to help me manage my schedule and my time and what I, what my kids have to do for the day. Very cool. So We're all 2015 techie mommies. But okay, now Cherry, let me let me ask you the same question because you know, uh, unlike our first two guests, you do have an office to check into. You're a lawyer, am I correct? Yes, yes, that's right. Actually, I was about to say that unlike the other mom, I work for a company which has a, an eight-hour work schedule, so I have to be there from nine to six. So what, what I did actually is because of the, because of my line of work, I had to choose. I used to be part of a law firm where the, the time would be more flexible, however, it would also entail me working very long hours. So I had to choose between having flexibility but working long hours or as I have now, working in a company where it, it's, a nine, it's a 9 to 6 job but at least there's, maybe there's um, a predictability of hours and I can actually go home before my kid goes to sleep. Right, and so the, the ability to turn off and switch off and get into mommy mode presents itself. Now, I, I, have you guys learned any specific lessons that, in terms of balancing home and work that you can share uh, with those that are watching and joining us today? This is free for anybody. Well, well, yeah. I think one one realization is that all moms, whether or not we be uh, full time or mompreneurs or um, home based or corporate, we're all just really um, busy with different roles. So we're pulled in different directions all the time, and it's really just matter of knowing what's important to you. Um, I think that's the root of it all. You know, 
um, we have so many duties and where we wear many hats and it's um, whether or not we have a baby or a teenager um, it's uh, something that we are all um, I guess for, that's all common to all mothers so um, I guess really just knowing what's important to you and then making that the guide and everything so yeah and is that how I mean do you guys do you guys put in a fixed schedule for the time that you spend uh, with your kids at home or is it sort of a free-flowing get the quality time in where you can situation well for me um, there are just days that uh, I really have to work more than be a mom and I've accepted that uh, that's why you just have to get rid of all the mommy guilt and all that and just know that uh, you're, if your kids feel loved and they know that you love them you'll be there for them at any time that sometimes that is enough um, and when when you do spend time with them it's just you just have to be really present and mindful and um, you'll see the connection and and really make quality time so it's, it's not simple but um, I guess it's a day-to-day -day thing and you just have to be mindful about things all the time right Jennifer, you, you talk about quality time let me ask uh, Cherry and Isabel um, in terms of quality time, do you, do you have any sort of rules? Do you self-check uh, in the sense that you say maybe no phones while I'm sp spending time with my kids? Yes, um, I don't allow my daughter to play with uh, gadgets like um, an iPad while we're eating or or we're playing. Um, and I also don't use my phone while, while I'm with her. Very cool. Cherry, what about you? Cherry? Okay. Yeah, our signal's <laughs> fluctuating a little. Can you hear us? Cherry? I try to. Uh, I try to self-check. Okay, we'll, we'll try to fix our feed with Cherry and get back to her in a bit. Now, um, what is quality time for you guys? I, you know, on a very personal basis, I know some people, you know, like to do simple things, maybe uh, cook together. Um, other people like to go on adventures together. What is your personal quality time? What are your favorite things to do at home? Dennis, let's start with you. Yeah. Well, I have kids uh, ranging from yeah. 18 to 8, so quality time with each one is different. Right. Um, with my teens, it's really more of talking. You know, they're boys, and um, sometimes you re I really cannot relate to <laughs> to a lot of stuff they're into, but I try. So it takes a lot of conversations. Um, sometimes in go to the cafe, uh, even just the hair their haircut, you know, and the drives. You can talk to them. Um, it's really uh, more on conversation since they're already well. My 18 year old is an adult, which I'm trying to accept. <laughs> um, but with my eight-year-old, it's still play. Uh, I have a lot of fun with her. I also love um, sitting on the floor with her uh, and uh, just really engaging in a lot of... Uh, we have this thing called make time for sleep because um, I think that sometimes motherhood, uh, well, we, we take it too seriously sometimes. So my daughter and I have these silly play times, like we have our blindfold makeup challenge and things like that. Just a lot of fun. <laughs> that sounds amazing. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, definitely something. You have like a, a hashtag or something online. Yes, I think I see. Sorry, Janice, what was that? That last part? Yes, we're starting our make time for silly series. There you go. <laughs> we'll, we'll follow you closely. Isabel, what about you? <laughs> I know you're an artist. Um, is that something that you pass yes. on to your, to your kids? Yeah, um, I try to encourage her to play creatively. Um, we play with play dolls and um, what? Um, sand. And we go around our compound and we just pick flowers and, and leaves. And um, I try to make her explore um, everything around her. And um, we also read a lot of books. So for a two-year-old, my my daughter speaks very well, and um, she knows a lot of words already. And 
I, I always ask her questions and talk to her while we're eating and and we sing songs and listen to different types of music. I'm, I'm, I'm exposing her to different um, genres of music. And we also have a bed um, time rituals. Um, before going to bed, um, we pray and read books and cuddle. So there. Um, I'm, I'm encouraging her to be more grateful by um, thinking of things that we are grateful for the day. At the age of two, that's an amazing habit to instill in your kids. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> All right, um, Cherry, Cherry, are you with us? If we got our lawyer back, Cherry. Okay, we'll we'll still fix that uh, signal. But now, guys, when it comes um, when it comes to the life at home, you know, we've we've established that uh, there's a lot of support and a lot of people that are involved. It truly does take a village to raise a child. But are there yeah. certain aspects of child rearing or the involvement in the household that you are very particular about that only you can do? I so let's start with you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um. I make it the point that I stay home with my kids for the first uh, at least six months of their life because um, I breastfeed and um, I do all the um, the, <laughs> the washing of the bottles to make sure that they're clean and so there. Um, basically, I'm, I handle everything for the baby. And there. <laughs> All right, great, Janice. And what about you? Are there are there things that, that only mommy does that nobody else can do? Yeah. Well, right now uh, they're already of age. They're like very independent. So I right now I, I just let go already. But um, with my youngest, my daughter, it's playtime. Like it's really just me and her playing. Um, maybe because the the helpers at home are not comfortable with English or something. They're just. <laughs> they're very um they cook with her and all that and just just as we bake and all that but it's more of the playtime that's really between her and me but with uh, i guess because they're already big big kids so yeah not not much anymore right now but yeah like isabel when i was uh, when they were babies it's really the breastfeeding the, the the feeding times that's bonding also for us and what amazing bonding that is. Right? I completely advocate uh, breastfeeding your child for as long as humanly possible. Although, I mean, <laughs> I've, I've seen pictures of like seven year olds still breastfeeding. We won't go there. That's a whole different um, conversation. But, um, you know, I think there are certain things that um, you, you try to introduce to your child. You want to open a world of possibilities. And I think summer is a great sort of uh, time frame to be able to do that. Um, Janice, I'll talk to you since you do have older children. When the kids yeah. are out of school, how do you fill those days? Because I know it's like a lot of hours yeah. that the kids are just, you know, raring and, you know, wanting to absorb something. Uh, what activity yeah. have, you, have you enrolled your kids in or exposed them to? Yeah, well, summer is my favorite time of year because we have um, a lot of time together and um, there's no homework. To worry about, um, but uh, I make it a point to balance out um, scheduled activities with downtime. Um, I don't believe in over scheduling, um, and also it's not only for them but also for me and um, my husband. We like to enjoy their company, just keep them at home as much as we can. But they do have an um, their own interests. Like my eight-year-old, oh she's nine. She just turned nine last week. Uh, my nine-year-old had a long list of summer classes she wanted to attend. So I told her if she would enroll in all of that, we won't see her anymore. <laughs> so we chose the top three. So she's doing tennis and math and um, cooking class. But again, it's just twice a week. And then the rest of the weekdays, she just spends at home to play, it's just free play. And then sometimes um, she would come to the office with us and, and just do some piling. You know, and <laughs> <laughs> so it's training, training as well. Um, for my teens, uh, my my eighteen year old has uh, four five months of summer vacation. Oh wow! He was telling me that my mom, my brain's gonna fry. Right. <laughs> the concern, right? So he's learning how to drive. He's doing um his he's a fencer. So he 
his training for fencing and then uh, he also they also come to work like him and my 16 year old they come to the office as well so it's just a balance balance of a lot of um, play and scheduled activity right okay and now uh, what about other special occasions you guys you know when it comes to say celebrating birthdays um, you know Christmas holidays are there certain traditions that you that you have that you really want to sort of instill in your kids Isabel it's what only been do, birthday so far no but yeah <laughs> what I did for my my daughter's first birthday uh, I I took her uh, I made the mini studio here at home and uh, I dressed her up like a princess and I took her picture so it will be more memorable and so and you, also um when we went to an out uh, we went to Boracay because um we figured that um she won't remember the party so well so um we might as well do something that she enjoys since um she enjoys swimming and playing um, in the water and sand, so we just brought her to Barakai <laughs> for her birthday. Yeah, you know, I, I've seen this on, you know, I've seen this online, and I actually know some moms that that have sort of um, little things that they like to do. Like, say, for example, have the kid with a with a chalkboard that says their birthday, and then they take the pictures throughout the years as the kid gets older. Does anybody have, you know, some cute little ideas that you can share with the moms out there like that? Janice, I'm sure you've got you've got a whole website full of full of yeah. <laughs> suggestions. Yeah, well, I love those. It's a new thing, you not know, that they put like one month, two months. It's so cute on the baby. I wish I thought of that when my kids were younger. But um, for us, uh, my hus it's my husband who has this photo of him and my eldest son since he was younger. Like he would he would have a photo of, with my son kissing my son like like a big pout. Yes. <laughs> Very cool. Well, I so again we said two birthdays still only, but uh, you you know she's still young enough for you to start these little traditions. Is there anything that you've got to? Yeah. I'm sorry, I wasn't able to hear the other. Oh, is there anything that you would like to start to start with her? In terms of these cute oh, picture things. Okay. Okay. I know. Hello. Yeah. There you are. Yeah. So I was just asking if there's anything. Since your daughter's still only two years old, um, is there anything that you would like to start with her in terms of traditions? Um, for her birthday. Yeah. Her um, I. Any other any other time? Yeah. Yeah, um, I take her pictures um, yearly. So um, there are dif different themes that uh, I want to try out. So um, for for her first birthday, um, it was a princess theme, um, Victoria. So um, maybe this year we'll do an Arabian <laughs> themed Vic Victoria for her. Since her name is Oasis, so oh, I figured oh. um, beautiful. Yeah, there's her hot like a uh, Arabian princess. That is so, uh, awesome. I do that yearly since um, I all I took photography classes, so um, uh, I have certain know-how for for that thing. She's gonna have an awesome photo book at the end. Cherry, are you with us? Yep, I think I'm back. <laughs> oh, <you laughs> back. Well, Cherry, how old is, how old is your uh, daughter? Was it? Yes, yes. My daughter just turned one last Feb 24, so just a little over a year. I'm a new mom compared to the other moms here. You're a brand new mom. Well, so let me share this one with, with you since you're, you have the youngest out of, out of everybody. I was reading something. Um, it was like sort of like a little life hack suggesting that you create an email address for your kid and then just continue to send photos of your child to, to this email address and then give her the password when she turns 18 years old. Isn't that a cute little yeah, idea? So cool. yeah, I, I heard something about that as well. Actually, aside from a, aside from the pictures, a letter would also be nice. One of my yeah. friends actually yeah. suggested writing a letter to your child, sending it to that email address, and then when your child is old enough to understand the contents of the letter, and um, she or he will have access to the, to the email that you 
to Asia. That would be nice, I think. That would be great. You know, I, I really want to reset and, and start. I'm like sending, you know, bulk emails from the past nine years <laughs> to my daughter's email address. It's like kind of an overload. Now, um, do you guys have any? Do you guys have any advice for for busy moms out there? I mean, maybe there were times where you were struggling uh, with with keeping balance somehow, or or finding a rhythm. Um, Cherry, I know this is the the first year. The first year I would say is the most challenging. Well, one of the yeah. most challenging. I haven't yeah. got the whole way. Challenging <laughs> for that. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, what are things that that you learned along the way? I, I think the most important thing I've learned, at least for the past year, is to be more forgiving of myself. Because I've been very, very guilty about a lot of things. Uh, the time that I had spent away from her, the things that I, I thought I should have done but didn't do, all of these um, ideas that we moms created for ourselves but end up not doing. So those are the things that, that, that make up the mommy guilt. So that's one of the more important things I've learned during the past year and something which I always share to my mom and friends. Be very, very forgiving, forgiving of yourself because at the end of the day, we moms really just do what we can. We try as best as we can. So I, I think we should give ourselves a pat at the back. Yeah. yeah. You know, the, the term mommy guilt has been brought up um, twice oh, okay. I think, on the show yeah. so far. And you know, it's it's something when I was when I was an early mom that I hadn't heard and I hadn't had access to. So I completely thought that I was I was on my own. And I remember, you know, not wanting to spend on myself. I didn't go shopping for about six, seven years. I didn't get my hair done, and it was just like it was such a cloud hanging over me. I finally went one day to get uh, my hair treated. And I found myself leaving the salon crying just because I was so, I don't know, overwhelmed. And I, you know, just a, a quick shout out to all of the moms out there that are feeling that way that didn't know that, you know, we all go through it. Is that safe to say that everybody has a considerable amount of mommy guilt? Yes, I, yes, I think so. I think so, yeah, I think so. Um, um, in fact, just very recently, I think I was telling my mommy friends that I have this particular issue um, in mind because I, I breastfeed my, my child. So after she turned a year old, I was thinking maybe it's about time that I introduce formula to her. But for the longest time, I've been trying to delay it. I was thinking maybe I'm depriving Andy, my daughter, um, of this very, very special gift because I can. Eh? So I was thinking, why, why would I stop if I can? But then on the other hand, I'm also thinking, I think I need to give myself some time. It's being very... Um, time consuming already. I I, I I get time away from work, so it's it's really until now actually it's still an issue. She's still breastfed, uh, but I don't pump anymore. But it's still part of that mom guilt. Definitely. What about the other two? Uh, how how has mommy guilt manifested in your life, and also how did you get over it, if you have already, assuming that you have? Um, <laughs> well, for me. Um, I, I just realized that time flies so fast. You know, my my 18 year old was a baby, and in the blink of an eye, even if I'm very hands on and with him every day, he's suddenly an adult. So when I meet young moms who are sleep deprived and really <laughs> struggling with, you know, breastfeeding, everything, you know, all the which diaper brand to buy and all the dilemmas. <laughs> I just say that, you know, it's just so fast. Just really have fun and savor it and relax. You know, it's we're all just trying to do our best. And um, again, you know, don't compare yourself to other moms because you, you, you know in your heart what kind of mom you want to be and should be for your own children. And then one mom um, once told me something very interesting, and I always keep it in mind. It's um, She told me that, you know, um, just like in business, uh, do what you do best and delegate the rest, right? So for our children in parenting, um, if the best thing you can do with your child is to play, you know, if you if like if you can't cook, don't force the issue, don't pressure yourself, right? Um, like for me, I just bake cookies and simple cupcakes with her. Of course, sometimes I'll try something different, but I won't really um, pressure myself into baking a cake with fondant if I can't do it. Just really relax and have fun, I think. All right, very cool. And now, now you guys, the world is so big. 
in many ways, it's kind of scary out there, you know, the access that they have to information these days. Um, how do you make the home the safe space? Like, what are little things that you do to, to just, you know, really drive home the fact that this is, this is HQ, this is headquarters, this is uh, your, your refuge? I, I think I don't have that much of an issue yet because she just turned a year old. But as much as possible, everything's really confined within the family, within very close friends. So um, since social media is very, um, everyone's very active in social media these days, I, I make it a point to just limit it to people I really know because you'll never really know where the information will land, where the picture of your child will reach. So all of these things, um, I try to be very careful. Um, also, I think it's about um, ensuring that uh, th that you have a village with you when you're raising your child, recognizing that you can get help from your parents, you can get help from your in-laws, because uh, really, even if you, you find a very uh, reliable house help, very reliable yaya, where you can with whom you can leave your child, it, it really won't replace the, the care and the attention that you will get from relatives, from friends, and from in-laws. I think it's that. It's the recognition that you don't have to do it all on your own, or at least you don't have to just have your partner with you, but you can have a village with you raising your child. Right. I so and and what about you? Um, let's talk a little bit about about making your home the safe space. Like, what are little things that you that you do to create a, a refuge for your daughter at home? Um, I like to decorate our house. So, um, I I, mean, I set up a playroom for my daughter so she can play there safely. I make sure that um, no wires are exposed or. Um, I just make sure that um, it's a safe place for her to play and um, it's very inviting for her to play. Um, I use very colorful colors for the the toys and the um, the floor, the matting that I use there. And also her bed. Um, uh, I got this canopy from Ikea. It's like a leaf canopy and it, it made her sleep better since um, it made her bed more cozy and Inviting to sleep too, right. and and sleep is such a such a huge moment for moms, especially the young moms. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. Have you have you uh, realized the true value of a good night's rest, Cherry? Um, I haven't had an eight a straight eight hour sleep for more than a year now because even before I gave birth, I haven't had straight sleep. So please, it's mommy, tell me. <laughs> what advice, guys, what advice can we give Cherry so that she can get a good night's sleep? I think you need a cozy, comfy, great smelling blanket and just disappear under there. Give yourself a time out every night and say, I am about to switch off. Is your, is your kid sleeping through the night yet, Cherry? Not yet. Um, she wakes up twice, so around midnight and then another one. Around dawn, so still no, no eight hours sleep for me. <laughs> we'll get there, Janice. Do you, do you remember those days? It will happen. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, Janice, your your eldest is eighteen now. Is is that a is that a distant memory, or does it still <laughs> haunt you a little yeah. bit? Well, I still remember. Um, that's why I was thankful for breastfeeding, because when you're breastfeeding, you really have to stand up, right? You you don't have to stand up and mix a bottle, so I was thankful for that. But still, like, um, thankfully, I didn't have children, babies who would play at night. I, I know that there's some who wake up at 3 a.m. and want to play. Um, so I, I was pretty, um, it was pretty manageable at the time. But I do remember being sleepy all the time, and it was a struggle also. Um, it, trying not to do things. Uh, they say that when your baby's asleep, that's the time you should sleep, right? So that you get, but then I always wanted to clean the house, you know, and also, yeah, but I do remember. <laughs> I mean, you know, I remember breastfeeding and just thinking that that was like the most magical experience that only a mother could ever, ever feel in her life. Um, did you guys 
share with us sort of uh, magical moments that you've, you've experienced with your I so let's start with you. Um, a magical moment. Oh, when when my uh, four month old wakes up in the morning and she lights up when I I'm about to carry her. I really like that part of my my morning. I'm getting so giggly right now. <laughs> I want to squeal. No, totally. And when my when my two year old just um hugs and kisses me out of the blue and she's she says, Mommy, I love you. <laughs> really, truly, only the things that a parent can experience. Cherry, magical moments that you've experienced? Yes. Uh, my, my, favorite, my favorite part, actually, breastfeeding is when, when you're holding your child and then she, she's breastfeeding and then she looks up at you and then gives you a smile. Oh. So that's actually my favorite, favorite part. That I tried to explain to my husband. He was telling me that you know you can actually do it. Um, you can you can still cuddle her. You can still carry her, and then hold her close if she's um, drinking from the bottle. It was it will still be the same. So I would explain to him. You know what? No, it's no. not. <laughs> it's it's me, not because the the connection that you have with your child, and then your child looks up, and then you know that at that particular moment, it's just you and your child, and she. And, and you have this connection, and she understands um, the love that you're giving her because of breastfeeding, and you get that smile as a reward. Uh, that's really the moment for me. Well, yeah. And Janice, your your magical moment. For me, I, I I just cherish the notes, the little notes that they leave with you, or they draw, and then they they put hearts, you know, and just simple notes. I mean, right now it's evolved to like Viber and text messages from them. And but, your whiteboard, I can see your whiteboard behind you, the little, I love you so much. Yeah. whiteboard. <laughs> <laughs> so they leave messages everywhere, and um, like even now my daughter sends me like tub smashes. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> so, mommy, I got six really cute. <laughs> see, truly, I mean, 2015, it, it's a whole new era of motherhood, I feel like. It's like a, a new brand of, of parenting. Um, are there oh. are there any apps that you guys can share with us that sort of make motherhood uh, either easier or more enjoyable? Oh. Uh, I use the first year app. What's that about? Uh, uh, it it's, uh, it tracks the, your feeding schedule and um, the sleep schedule of the the baby. So you record the the sleeping times and. Um, what time she um, you last fed her? So you have an idea what th what time's the next next nap or next feeding. Fantastic. Yeah. You can also her, her milestones and, and her her vaccinations. You can you can record it in that app. Oh my gosh, that's so great! What was it called again? The first year. First year. Yeah. All right. Cool. Uh, it, it's not to pay for it though. It's not free. But it's, it's really great. I think it's just uh, two dollars. That would be worth it if it's your kids. If it's your kids' milestones, and two dollars is nothing. We know we've spent much more on things that we didn't really need. I'm sure. Cherry, do you have any little knickknacks, gadgets, apps that uh, that make your journey as a mom easier? Um, I think it's not so much an app, but I make use of technology so much in a sense that I have mommy groups. So I think that's where technology is most helpful for me. Un unlike an app or a ready Google question or an internet search, um, I do it the a little bit old-fashioned way in the sense that I ask moms what their experiences were, how it was during their time. Fortunately for me, I have mommy friends who have much older children and they can give me tips and they, they can give me advice. So that's where I use technology in a sense. Very cool. And and Janice, you're uh, you're an internet native. Yeah. <laughs> what about you? Yeah, well I don't I don't really have an app um, that I like, but um, it's really just I guess blogs, you know, the mom blogs that we read. Um, I guess in the same way that Cherry talks to her friends that you can read uh, advice and experiences from other mom blogs as well. Yeah, and Facebook, right? So did you give us Did you give us a, a rundown of maybe your top three, top five uh, favorite mommy blogs, including your own? 
Oh, mommy vlogs. Um, well, there's uh, local. I, I'd rather choose the local ones. We yeah. do have some, a lot of friends who are here. So one is um, Ben D. Chow's uh, Manila Fashion Observer. Because mm -hmm. it's a mix of discoveries, some brands that, that she would recommend. And um, I guess it's also fun watching her children dress up. So it's fun and uh, learning at the same time. And then another one is um, manilamommy.com of Neva. Um, she has a lot of tips, like um, like applying for your SSS for your kasambahay, you know, very practical step-by-step um, -step tips. And then I also like for um, entertainment, mommyfloor.com, because she, she's a working mom, but she's so um, hands-on with her daughter. And she just makes cuento, like her daily, like everything. Like now she's fixing her house or what her daughter said to be, you know, things like that, and also a lot of advice. All right, very cool. Guys, thank you so much for the input. I'm learning so much. I'm going to go home and, and download apps and check blogs and things. Um, you know, I know that I, I had a foray into, I wanted to start a blog, and I started making sort of the bento lunch boxes for my daughter. Oh. <laughs> and I tried to do it every day, and then all of a sudden it was just every Friday, and then now it's like <laughs> once a month, and <laughs> I haven't done it in two months. But uh, I guess I guess bento mom. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I guess the moral of the story is just do what you can when you can, mm -hmm. and um, if you have the opportunity to share it to inspire other moms, then, then do so. Uh, how much do you guys put online when it comes to your kid? Because I know that there are there are people where it's like all they post is pictures of their kid. Um, other people are are much more private. They don't want to show you know their, their child's face. Um, Meme online. How are you guys with all of that? Um, it, it would be up to me. I, I think I'd be posting a lot more, but because I I have a husband who's also a lawyer, he's very very careful. He regulates me. He tells me all the time that you know all of these things you need not post to social media. If you want your friends to see it, just send it to them. Just email it to them or send it via text or Viber or WhatsApp or whatever. So I try as much as I can to to um, do what my husband tells me because it really makes sense. As much as I want to show the entire world how cute my daughter is, you know, she did this, she did that, I do recognize that as moms, we have to be very careful. Um, we have to recognize the, the, the internet is a really dangerous place as well, despite the fact that we only have mom friends in our Facebook, that we only give access to certain people. I think we need to recognize that there has to be some level of um, confidentiality, I think, or that, that there has to be some level of protection that, that we need to observe. I saw, what about you? Are you a post it all mommy or, or keep it close mommy? Uh, I post a lot of pictures, but uh, uh, I try to share it to um, our friends and family. So uh, I um, I make sure that the privacy settings in my Facebook and Instagram are only for for the people that we know. All right, awesome. And Janice, what about you? Yeah, for me, I it's the same. I just watch my privacy settings. Um, so, but in terms of faces, I don't cover up or anything like that. However, what I like to do is to choose the moments that I want to share. Like, not I don't put everything out there. There's some things that I just want to keep to myself and my family. Um, but so that I guess that's a way to regulate and also to to just keep um, some memories that are are just private and really for our own for our own um, enjoyment, right? Right. Okay. Fantastically answered, all of you. Thank you so much. My last question is this: Janice closed out talking about uh, preserving memories. If there was one thing that you could that you could preserve from your your child's or early years that you would like to hold on to forever, what would that be? Terry? For me, the very very vivid memory that they want to preserve would be the birth. That's really the where. The entire emotion of motherhood is encapsulated, um, at least so far. So I'm not sure if down the road there will be better ones, but it's really on top of my list. Janice, what about you? 
Um, for me, it's it's really when when they were babies, and because I it's just so fast. So now that I enjoy them, um, while they're of age, I just try to look back at when they were babies, and they were all ours. Um, and they would just smile at you and look at you with adoring eyes, as if you were the <laughs> the best woman in the world. Um, um, and just you know, holding their hands, being small enough to hold, you know, um, like now I hold their hands, but sometimes bigger than mine. No, just looking back at all those moments that um, that forever will be a gift, a gift for me and my husband. And I so let's finish off with you. Uh, I'd like to hold on to the memories also when they were babies because uh, it makes me feel so special that to know that um, I'm the number one person in their life because um, they always look for me and they depend me and I know eventually when they grow up they won't <laughs> they won't even like to spend time so much time with me so, um, I'm, I really want to preserve that um, time in my in my life. All right, guys, thank you all so much. Personally, the one thing I know I want to preserve is, I mean, my daughter's at the point where she goes out and she gets so sweaty and she comes home smelling like a teenage boy sometimes. I know that the <laughs> smell, that baby smell, is something that I miss so much, and I think I'm going to keep on having kids so I can keep smelling that smell. <laughs> guys, thank you once again. Thank we you. have been talking to four modern moms, Janice Villanueva, Isabel Romero, and Cherry Mendoza, all fantastic individuals. Thank you, ladies. Amazing Thanks. women. Um, just sharing tips and little insights on motherhood with us in today's modern world. Thank you all for spending time with us this evening. My name is Sarah Meyer, and uh, I hope to see you again here on Rappler. Guys, good night. Good night. Thank you. Thank you.